Hey guys, welcome to TCR, Sid here. Thanks for clicking on the video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Today we're gonna to talk about five reasons that you need to get yourself a barn cat. removal system. They will go after all of those kits that are nibbling in your garden, all of the gophers that are tearing up your garden, uh, all of the rats and mice that you have running around in your barn. They will get after them for you. And you're not having to worry about any nasty chemicals that potentially your other livestock could be getting into. So reason number two that you want to get yourself a barn cat is, believe it or not, <laughs> When you have a barn cat, especially near a flock of birds, they tend to keep some of the predators at bay that tend to go after your birds. Things like skunks, possums, uh, weasels, ferrets, depending on the area you're in. I found in my experience that with my barn cats around, they tend to like to sleep in the coop even though they have their own area. And I have found that they have not had any incidences. We haven't caught any on film with the trail cams. I haven't lost any broken eggs. I haven't had any chickens that I wake up in the morning and their heads are gone, uh, which is a typical sign of possums or skunks. Something about the barn cats being around seems to be deterring some of those predators that would be going after my chickens and my eggs. So a great reason to go get yourself a barn cat. The third reason you should get yourself a barn cat is they are cheap. You can adopt them from different barn cat programs or even just your local animal shelter is usually overrun with kittens, especially certain times of year. One of the benefits to that is that it's very inexpensive to get yourself one of these little bad boys or girls. And a lot of times they already are fixed. It's part of your adoption fee. They've already had their first round of shots uh, and they are already fixed. If you find somebody locally in your area that rescues feral kittens, a lot of times uh, they either are rehoming them for a very, very small fee, just basically to cover the cost of like their initial shots and food. So a lot of times it's like $25. And to go ahead and get them fixed at the vet, again, very inexpensive. There's also a lot of local programs through different animal shelters that you can get uh, like a certificate basically. And a lot of local vets will do it more inexpensively. And you also wanna make sure that when you do that, like I can tell you for my barn cats, it was about $50. I let them know that they were gonna be barn cats. They were gonna be outdoors. And what they do is while they're under uh, taking care of that, they go ahead and clip their tip of their ear, which is a signal that this is a feral barn cat, outdoor cat. Uh, and so that way somebody doesn't think it's someone's lost cat outside if it happens to wander onto their property in their field or something like that. So that's a great reason. You're getting an animal that's either been rescued from a bad situation where maybe the mom abandoned the feral kittens, which happens a lot because they tend to have them in areas that are not so great. And uh, you're able to then, um, you know, save that kitten from, you know, depending on what state you're in, uh, a bad situation or not ever leaving the shelter. So you're doing a good thing and you're helping yourself out at the same time. When you get yourself a barn cat, they are super low maintenance. Probably of all the animals that you could ever have, they are the most easy to deal with. You basically, once you get them, you wanna pen them in an area for six to eight weeks. Doesn't matter what age they are when you get them, whether you adopt an older cat that's being rehomed or if you're getting a kitten, uh, you still wanna pen it up for six to eight weeks. And then uh, you do wanna supply it with a little bit of kibble and access to water, of course, just like the rest of your animals. But beyond that, they are super low maintenance. You don't have to do anything with them. They will go hunting around your property. They will eat mostly what they catch, but they will need a little bit of kibble in case there's a couple slow days, you know. Uh, and they're easy. You don't have to do anything. They take care of themselves. They, they clean themselves. They, they just run around and do their own thing and you really don't have to do anything for them. So they are super low maintenance. And that is reason number four. There goes Max into the garden to go hunting.
they're great little hunters, of course. Reason number five that you need a barn cat. They're fun. It is so fun to watch them running around, hunting, getting that gopher that you were driving yourself crazy about. They, they're just fun to sit there and watch. Now I've got, I've had several barn cats over the years. Um, I had one when we moved here that was like already like 16 or 17 when we moved here and she's a beautiful Maine Coon, um, which is a great breed. If you're specifically looking for a specific breed, they are a great breed for that. She was more wild, <laughs> but I managed to tame her uh, for a few years before uh, she left us. She was probably somewhere about 20 to 21 when she disappeared one day, um, but she was very, very old. I've since adopted a few more cats and I've got Max, who is uh, roaming around in front of me as we speak uh, on the hunt and uh, our buddy Brutus, who I adopted from a family that was moving. And they had him as an outdoor cat and I have kept him as an outdoor barn cat. He is definitely much more friendly than Max. Max was from a feral litter. I actually had two of his brothers, um, but unfortunately those two, they lasted for a little while, but then they were no more, uh, which does happen. Sometimes they, even, as, even when they're super feral, uh, they can, you know, they can succumb to coyotes and predators just like anything else. After they make it the first few years, you do find that they, they kind of, they're good after that. <laughs> they tend to like learn the ropes a little bit. Um, but here with us being up near the creek, we do have a big coyote problem. Uh, once they go out into the pastures and things, they're kind of on their own a little bit. <laughs> but they are fun to watch when they're hunting. And you know, you might get one that's more feral, that won't let you go near it or ever touch it. Um, you know, Max was feral and I tried to hold him and love on him when he was a kitten. He was not having it, still won't have it to this day. But I am the only one that he lets get within like three feet of him. So I consider that a win. And of course, Brutus, I could walk up and pick him up and love on him, no problem. But Max, as feral as he is, he loves the chickens. In fact, I think that he identifies as a chicken. He sleeps in the ch chicken coop at night. Uh, he plays with the chickens, he shares scraps with the chickens. I think he thinks he's a chicken, which is great because, you know, a lot of people worry too when you get barn cats, you know, are they gonna go after my baby chicks if I let the moms raise them in the yard? Are they gonna kill all the songbirds in, in the trees and all of that? I can tell you that they seem to understand that the birds that we have and the birds that we raise are not for food for them. <laughs> they, uh, I've never had one of my barn cats uh, go after any of the babies, any of the chicks, the ducklings, nothing. I've never had an issue with it. Uh, and I've also never had any issues with them going after songbirds in the trees. I feel like they have enough other stuff to go after and they seem to kind of understand that that's not what they're supposed to eat. I don't know if I just got lucky I haven't ever heard of anybody else having that problem either. I could see maybe the songbirds than them going after them, but uh, the chicks, the ducklings, things like that, I've had zero issues with the barn cats going after them. But it is funny to watch Max like rub up against the chickens and love on them. It's hysterical. And he sleeps next to them curled up in the chicken coop every night. In fact, when I go out there to lock the chicken coop up, and sometimes I'll peek in there to see if there's any more eggs. Half the time when he hears me close the door, he comes bolting out like a banshee and scares the bejesus out of me. But <laughs> he loves sleeping with those chickens. It's the wildest thing. You know, when Brutus has his little spots, he tends to stay closer to the patio. He goes on the farm side and stuff, but he does kind of, this is sort of his little roosting spot up here that he enjoys. And I put their food up there so it's out of the way from the chickens, can't have access to it. Uh, and that's where they, you know, come every morning when they get fed. But yeah, I mean, they're fun. Even if, you know, maybe you, like I said, maybe you get one that's a little more feral, but you know, that's okay. You don't have to be loving on them. They have a job to do. And I think if you keep them maybe a little bit more wild, they tend to do a really good job about, you know, keeping your pests down. Uh, and, you know, they go after all those kits, you know, those rabbits that are in your yard. Uh, they, they really, you know, they keep them from nibbling on all your goodies in the garden. And 
they go after all the mice and the gophers and the rodents and the lizards and all the stuff that you know you kind of tend to get overrun with if you don't have something taking care of it and i don't know about you guys but i don't want to be putting a bunch of poison out either in my garden of things that i'm going to be eating or anywhere near my livestock so having those guys is a great 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 option to keep it nice and safe and healthy again number two they're a good predator deterrent uh, they tend to keep all those things at bay, especially because Max tends to sleep in the coop. Um, I haven't had any issues with any headless chickens lately. Uh, knock on wood, I might have just jinxed myself, but I haven't had any skunks or possums getting in there wrecking the eggs or pulling heads off my girls. So that's been amazing. Number three, keeping it out of a shelter. You know, you're, you're, you're keeping a, a kitten or a cat from, you know, maybe a bad situation and giving them a nice life on a, on a farm where they have space to roam and hunt and be cats, right? They're cheap. It's not expensive to get yourself a barn cat, you know? And, and of course, last but not least, they're fun to watch. They're fun to watch them hunt. They're great to have around. It's awesome. That's why you need to get yourself a barn cat or two or three or four. Hey, Mike, I think I need another barn cat. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like the video, share the video, comment on this video, and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to click the bell so you get the notifications.